What's going on guys, your man House Brian Brian. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how we as investors can work with realtors. So pay attention, I'm gonna show you how we can make money with our licensed friends. They probably ain't got the right people helping them. Look, I'm 31, here's the best advice I give my teenage friends. It was easy. What can I tell you, it was hard? No, it was easy. So I'm here with Nicole Handy, a top producer here in Houston, Texas, and she's gonna share with us the do's and the don'ts when trying to make money or trying to do any type of business with her. What's up, everybody? So Nicole, I know one of the top things that benefits us as investors is to have accurate comps. We need to know what the value of something is before right. we can make any type of offer, before we can dig in a project or do anything like that. How can you as a realtor help us with something like comps without wasting your time? So one thing people don't realize or investors don't realize is that running comps is a paid service. So whereas you may not necessarily be bringing a deal, right, acquisition or a sale to the table, you can still pay realtors to run comps for you. You know, we, in addition to running comps, we also have a lot of tools and platforms that we use to do a thorough market analysis. So not only just running comps, but helping you understand your particular market, the trends in that market, the mm -hmm. inventory in that market, helping you understand how long it's gonna take for your property to, to sell and things like that. We have access to all of that and we will offer that as a paid service without it necessarily being a transaction involved. Got you. So, because um, one of the things I don't want anyone to get confused is that a realtor can just run all your comps on all these properties that you don't even plan on buying. So, what's the way if someone didn't want to pay for that type of service up front that they still can, you know, compensate you or, or it makes sense or bring value to you and still being able to kind of get helps with like, you know, comps if they don't have their own software to run it. So bring us some business, you know, what you can do, you can refer other people to us, you know, you can refer your investor buddies to us. Mm -hmm. You can also refer people to us that's looking to buy or sell their home. What we're looking for is the value add. Whereas you may not be personally um, adding value monetarily wise, by you bringing me business, that's still adding value to me. Got you, so perfect. Um, if we want a realtor to help us with comps, um, just kind of do something in, in return, like give them uh, referrals. And that shouldn't be hard to do at all because I think I was reading some stats that 92 to 96 percent of all homeowners list their property on the market with a realtor when they're looking to sell. So just think about that. Out of 100 people you talk to, probably about 92 of them are going to be a better fit for Nicole. Absolutely, absolutely. But on the flip side, there's that other 8% that, that have a property that we as realtors kind of deem very difficult to sell. The trap houses. You know, the, the, tra <laughs> <laughs> the trap houses, the dilapidated homes, the trashed homes, you know, homes that have, may have been vacant for a very long time. Those are often difficult for realtors to sell. You know, we do put a lot of marketing money and effort into marketing a home effectively when listing it. So the last thing we want to do is waste money and time and effort on a home that probably won't sell on market. So those right. are the type of deals we're wanting to pass off to investors because we know you guys can handle those properties right. and you're willing to take on Absolutely. the work that needs to be done to restore that property. Absolutely. It, it brings me to another point because I know People only kind of like put us in the light of like dilapidated, be up properties. But I, I know as investors, sometimes we can help you guys with other type of properties. Maybe uh, it's a property in a nice neighborhood and the property just doesn't have enough equity and the seller wants to sell. But the realtor commission might... Right you know, have them negative at closing. I mean, yeah. have you ever came across something Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. So, I mean, a good example of that is like life happens. You know, people's mm -hmm. job situation and things like that change all the time. So I've had quite a few, honestly, that have moved to Houston or relocated to Houston. Then a year later, get relocated somewhere else. So within that year, they just hadn't built up enough equity in the home to make it a good fit to sell on the market. But don't you guys do that creative stuff? Yeah. So <laughs> something like that, we could possibly, uh, you know, take over subject to structure a wraparound mortgage and uh, have all legal documents, you know, with the title company, real estate attorney, so that seller is comfortable. So another thing you talked about, you said market research. So mm -hmm. you can actually help an investor learn their market a little bit better. So what, what are some tools that you have at your disposal that I can't, uh, you know, access as a non-licensed realtor at the time? Like, how, how do you have an upper hand on me? Okay. And how so can you help? The main one is 
access to the MLS. So access to the MLS, you're going to find all the data about market sales, right? So this is your, what's, what's currently active, what's sold, what's possibly pending. And if you even want to kind of look at the rental comps to see mm -hmm. what a property that you could acquire or would possibly rent for, that's a, a great, that's a great tool as well. But we also have access to some really, really, really robust market insight tools. One particular platform that I use, it not only shows on market sales, but it shows off market sales as well. So that really kind of helps us communicate to investors the true picture of what's going on in that particular market or area. All right. So what are some do's? What are some do's or must has that you want uh, an investor to get right before they come and approach you, you know, with some type of you. partnership or some type of, you know, business. So the main thing guys first is know your exit strategy and know specifically what you want. What is your baseline? How many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, the area, everything, your baseline criteria. We need to know that honestly, <laughs> you know, not talking about some of you investors, but I get, Quite a few investor calls saying, hey, I want to invest. <laughs> In what, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, we, what, where, how? <laughs> you know? right. um, so, yeah, so, so don't necessarily look to realtors to be your industry experts in helping you understand the entire investing, pro you investing process. Work. You have to do some legwork, right? You have to have a, some understanding of what it is you're doing and mm -hmm. what you're looking for. Additionally, I already have your core team in place. When I say your core team, I'm meaning people like your lenders, your contractors, your inspectors, your boots on the ground. Uh, when you when we find these deals, these properties move really fast. A lot of people are looking to invest. So if you don't have your core team in place ready to take the necessary steps to do everything, to do all of the analytics on that property, to see if it's a good fit for you or not, day one, you're at a disadvantage. So the elephant in the room. Um, there's a lot out here because we know that there's realtors that lobby against wholesalers. <laughs> there's investor friendly um, uh, realtors. Yeah. There's realtors that are actually wholesalers. Yeah. So there, there's the talk that investor, I mean, realtors hate investors. And I know you, you're not one of them, you know, because uh, Nicole, she started out, <laughs> you know, as, as an investor. Um, what? Clear that up for us. I mean, why, why is it that most realtors feel a certain way about you know, investors. Well, I think it's one so because of, again, you know, you mentioned wholesalers. I right. feel like there is an effective way to the wholesaling game. Okay. You know, there's an effective way to wholesale. One, being truthful with the with the sellers, letting them know specifically that, hey, I'm not actually purchasing your property, mm -hmm. but I'm going to find you the best deal. Another thing, realtors, we are we work in a commission based industry, right? right. So a, a lot of investors do come looking for discounts. Factor the realtor commission into your bottom line. You know, pay the realtor the standard, you know, market commission, and that way they'll do a great job for you every time. So that's it, guys. You heard it here from Nicole herself on how we can do business with our realtor friends. You got any partner words for them, Nicole? I do, actually. So I want to say this. Realtors are totally not against investors. There are a lot of investors out here that I truly love and admire exactly what they're doing. One way we can work better though together is being re true referral partners, right? You refer the thing, the deals that don't work for you over to us realtors. And in return, we do the same thing. And additionally, we can even help you with some of those analytics and things like that using some of the tools that we have access to, to help you with your property and market analysis. So guys, hope that was valuable of how you can start to build a relationship with a realtor near you. Uh, if you like this video, smash the like button, share, subscribe. See you guys on the next video.